Section 2 of Phrasal Verbs. This is a section on forming questions with do, does, and did. It operates the same as ordinary verbs, but uh, phrasal verbs are also a way of forming questions. We go to the first part and we see that the present tense questions here, present tense questions, in the present tense questions are formed with do, except when the subject is he, she, or it, or the name of one person or thing. This is normal for verbs, just like we do in ordinary verbs. The first one, why do I always fall for losers? Okay, you can see that this is in the present tense. Why do I always fall for losers? That is the question form. The next one would do, do you sometimes doze off in class? We will get the meaning of those later. Do we ever give in to pressure? And how do these bottle topics tops come off? When the subject is he, she, or it, or the name of one person or thing, does is used as normally with he, she, and it. Okay, remember that the S forms of the verb is not used in questions. Okay, does this welding torch throw sparks up into the air? Present tense negative and the present tense negatives are formed with do not and don't as you would normally do in any question, except when the subject is he, she, or it, or the name of one person or thing. Here we have examples of do and does. I used to doze off while driving, but I don't anymore. I used to doze off while driving, but I don't anymore. I think he has the flu because you don't usually throw up, and that's a phrasal verb, when you have a cold. And we have down in here, we don't usually fall for crazy stories like that. If his dogs do not stray off, uh, stay off our lawn, I'm going to call the dog catcher. And then down here, when the subject is he, she, or it, or the name of one person or thing, does not or doesn't is used. If Mark doesn't pull through, Five children would be without a father. Here we use doesn't because it, the, the word mark is one person. Past tense questions. In the past tense, questions are formed with did. Remember to use the infinitive form of the verb. Fine. I'm so embarrassed. Why did I fall for his lies? Did the patient pull through? How many times did he throw up? Did we give in to their demands? Did they hear about the explorer who was eaten by piranhas? 
This is past tense negatives. Remember the other were, were ordinary questions. This is when you form a negative saying it does not or won't or so forth. And the negatives are formed by did not and didn't. Okay. Remember to use the infinitive form of the verb. Okay. I was really sick, but I didn't throw up. If it was a positive, it would say, but I did throw up. You didn't fall for that nonsense, I hope. He pulled and pulled, but the bowling ball did not come off. Next one. We didn't hear about the half-price sale, sale until it was too late. And finally, I'm sorry we tried everything, but she didn't pull through. Now we go on to the phrasal verbs. We know how to form questions using phrasal verbs. Now we'll go on and learn the meaning of phrasal verbs. Come off. Okay, when something comes off, it becomes detached from what it was attached or fastened to. Be careful with this old book. The cover is coming off. The cover is coming off. The cover is the part of the book that uh, covers, uh, like when you have a book, you have the book itself, and then you have something over like a cover, which usually is some type of illustration. So the cover is that part which covers the entire book. That paint won't come off your hands unless you use turpentine. That won't come off your hands. You cannot remove the paint from your hands unless you use turpentine. And turpentine is a word that means it's a. It's really the uh, from the sap of a pine tree, and it is used to thin paint and to remove paint. Come off can be. <clears throat> Men, when an event comes off, it is successful. When a event happens, it is successful. The party came off well. Everyone had a lot of fun. The party was a success. Everyone had fun. The attack didn't come off the way the general planned it. The attack, and the attack in this case, is when an army uh, encounters another group and they, they fight each other. The attack didn't come off. The attack didn't succeed the way the general planned it. Come off here means when you say come off or come off it, you have to use that it, to people you're saying that you think something they have said is untrue or foolish. It's 2 a.m., you come home smelling like beer, and you say you were working late at the office. Oh, come off it. In other words, come on, I don't believe you. Okay? Here we have doze off. Then remember, they are conjugated present tense, ing form, past tense, and past participle. Really. And they are conjugated. And you conjugate him like you would any other verb. Doze off. When you fall into a light sleep, 
you doze off. A light sleep is meaning you're not totally unaware of what's happening about you. You're just a sort of a half asleep or, in this case, a uh, light sleep. I went to a movie last night, but it was so boring, I dozed off. More or less, I sort of fell asleep. If I have a drink at lunch, I'm sure to doze off at my desk. Again, doze off to fall asleep, to a light sleep. Here we have fall four, fall four, fall four. Okay? When someone successfully, successfully tricks or deceives you, you fall for the trick or deception, or you fall for it. I fell like an idiot. The salesman promised me it was a real diamond, not glass, and I fell for it. Fell for it, more in this case, you might say, means I believed him. I believed what he told me, so I fell like an idiot, meaning I believed him like an idiot. And the diamond, not glass, I fell for it. I believed his lie. Your girlfriend told you that guy, that guy, she was dating with, at, with at the party was her brother. How could you fall for a story like that? How can you believe something like that? It's not convincing. It must be a lie. Number two, fall for. When you suddenly feel strong attraction to someone or something, you fall for that person or thing. Jim met Sam's sister last week, and now he calls her every day. I guess he really fell for her in a big way. Fall for her, you know, he, he became infatuated with her. He was attracted to, I guess, he really was attracted to her in a big way. Here we have, when I saw this house, I fell for it immediately and made an offer the same day. I fell for it. I was attracted to it. I wanted it immediately. I fell for it. I want it immediately. Fell for it. Give in. Or give in to. They have here in brackets, which is sometimes added to the word. When someone pressures or forces you to do something or allow something, even though you do not want to do it, you give in, you capitulate, you uh, allow yourself to be convinced uh, that this is something you should do. My son drove me crazy asking me to buy him a new bicycle and I finally gave in. I'm using the word capitulate, which means I finally agreed. I finally agreed to buy him the bicycle. The strike lasted for eight months, but the company never gave in to the workers' demands. The company, I striked last week, the company never uh, permitted the workers' demands, no, did not give to the workers their demands. When you pull through, you recover from a serious illness or injury, you pull through. The doctor didn't think his chances were very good, but he pulled through. 
Eric is very sick, but he's young and strong, and I'm sure he will pull through. I'm sure that he will recover. Stay off. Stay off. When you stay off something, you don't walk or sit on it. Okay, you stay off of it. You do not place anything on it or you do not walk on it. You do not in any way uh, put something or yourself on it. You kids play in the living room, but stay off the Persian rug. Do not get on the Persian rug. What can I do to get my cat to stay off the kitchen counter? What do I do to have the cat avoid the kitchen counter to uh, not place itself on the kitchen counter? Throw up. Throw up. When people throw up, they vomit. Now, we all know the word vomit. So, Alex was so sick, he threw up all over my shoes. Alex was so sick that he vomited all over my shoes. I feel like I'm going to throw up. I feel like I'm going to vomit. Here we have throw up. When something causes small particles of dirt, dust, liquid, or anything to rise into the air, it throws them up. Uh, I'm trying to think of another word. It uh, pushes it out. It causes it to fly into the air. Be careful with the chainsaw. I'll throw sawdust up in your eyes. It will uh, have cause sawdust to go into your eyes. Throw up. When people throw up, they vomit. Alex was so sick that he threw up over my shoes, I feel like I'm going to throw up. Throw up when something, small particles of dust uh, or liquid are thrown, arise in the air, it throws them up. Be careful with the chainsaw. It'll uh, cause uh, sawdust to go into your eyes. It'll throw sawdust up in your eyes. Don't stand too close to fire. It's throwing up sparks. Uh, don't close, stand too close to the fire. It's causing sparks to go up into the air. Here we will complete these sentences. Heather calls Tom every day. I feel she's what? You called everybody every day. We went over a word. If you have a particular feelings or affection for somebody, <coughs> what do you do? What is the phrasal verb for that? The phrasal verb is falling for him. I have a feeling she she's falling for him. Next we have, I went to the shoe repair guy because he heals my shoe. What happens with heels sometimes? You have to take them and have them repaired. They come apart from the shoe. We would say that the, the heel fell off my shoe. Fell off my shoe. And number three, blank, blank, ten minutes after the movie started, I missed the whole thing. Well, either watching the movie or you're busy talking or you might go asleep. And the phrasal verb here is, I dozed off 10 minutes after the movie started. Okay? And number four, 
The bride drank too much champagne and she all over the best man. Okay, if you drink too much champagne, what happens sometimes? I know, you get a headache, but you also do something else. You vomit. And the phrasal verb for that is that she threw up all over the best man. Then we go to number five. I need a car to go to the party. So I told my father I needed his car to go to the library to study. And he, well, he lied, right? And if you lie to someone and they believe you, what is the phrasal verb for that? That when I believe a lie. What is it? Yeah. He fell for it. He fell for it. Very good. And you recover, right? When you recover. Okay, but the phrasal verb to mean that if he pulls through, it'll be a miracle. Then we go down to number seven. I just shampooed the carpet. Shampooed means like, you know, when you shampoo your hair, or you shampoo carpets. You clean it with soap and water. I just shampooed the carpet in the living room. So what do you want to do? When you just fix the carpet, it's clean. You don't want someone to, to go on it, right? You don't want somebody to walk on it. So the phrasal verb that says don't walk on it means stay off it. Stay off it, okay? Now number eight. The coup, blank, blank, without any bloodshed. Well, what's a coup? A coup is when some government fails and somebody takes over the government. So there's, a, there's bound to be some problems. But if there's no problems, the coup, okay, we succeeded in the coup. We succeeded in the coup, and the word, the phrasal verb for that would be uh, the, it came off. The coup came off without any bloodshed. And number nine, I don't care if you beg me all night, right? I'm not blank, blank. What is it when you, you are trying to convince something of something, you want to do something, and they're resisting, but if they stop resisting and allow you to do it, what is that? More or less, they uh, permit you to, right? So, uh, I'm saying I'm not giving in, meaning I will not permit you to do that. I'm not giving in. And finally, 10, and number 10, your brother's accident last night, he is all right. Well, what, what about our accident? You either involved in it or you receive information about it. And if you receive information about it, you know, you heard, I heard about your brother's accent. I heard about. 